Even if you don't care about climate change, you should still care about the things causing climate change. You see, we aren't just destroying our planet, we're killing ourselves in the process. By poisoning our air and destroying our lands, our toxic relationship with our planet is claiming millions of lives today. But this isn't a story of pure tragedy, because we can still save these lives, and we have so much to gain from stopping climate change beyond stopping climate change. I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. Today I want to talk about just how bad the things that cause climate change are, but I don't want to talk about climate change. Let me explain. So there are loads of things that are churning greenhouse gases into our atmosphere and heating up our planet, but we can broadly categorize most of them into just two things, energy and what we do with land. Energy includes electricity generation, transport, manufacturing, and then what we do with land includes the emissions that come straight from farming, as well as how we fundamentally alter land through land use, land use change, and forestry. You can remember that with the helpful acronym LELUCIFER. Yes, that is a real acronym. No, it is not actually helpful. So together, producing energy and using and abusing land are heating up the planet. But maybe you're watching this thinking, I don't believe in all that. Or just that you don't care about climate change. Well, you should still care about this. And here's why. Now, when we burn stuff like coal and fossil gas in power plants and factories and oil in our cars, yes, that produces a bunch of greenhouse gases, which we're pretending not to care about. But on top of that, it also produces air pollution. Well, what's even the difference between air pollution and greenhouse gases? I mean, they might sound like the same thing, but air pollution is actually talking about the stuff gases and tiny particles emitted into the air that hurts our health. Not by causing climate change, but by directly harming us when we breathe it in. And while air pollution can harm us in the moment we breathe it in, the most serious problems come from long-term chronic exposure. Breathing in unhealthy air for a lifetime well, it can make that lifetime shorter. Okay, but we're just talking about air here. It can't be that big of a deal. Well, yeah. I genuinely don't think people understand just how horrific air pollution is. I'm curious what you reckon too. Maybe pause the video and write what fraction of all deaths you think are caused by air pollution worldwide. I posted a little poll a couple of weeks ago here on YouTube, and the most common selection was that air pollution causes about one out of every hundred deaths, which would be a lot, but it's also way off. Estimates indicate that globally, air pollution kills about eight million people every year. To put that in context, diabetes causes around 2 million deaths per year. But if you're like me, even with that context, it's still hard to get a feeling for what 8 million deaths really means. Well, it means that around 1 out of every 8 deaths is caused by breathing toxic air. 1 in 8? That's terrifying. It really is. I mean, imagine you lived in a village and there was a murderer who was secretly poisoning one in every eight people living there. But actually, it wasn't really a secret. Everyone really knew who the murderer was, just no one talked about it. I mean, actually, you don't have to imagine this because you already live there. The village is our planet and the murderer is air pollution. To me, it's so shocking that we don't talk about this more, that we don't talk about it constantly. And when we do talk about air pollution, we often talk about it in vague terms, more as if it's a nuisance than a major deadly threat. And when companies get caught polluting our air, it's often a scandal that they've broken the rules. And we don't really mention that breaking these rules mean many people will actually die. But one in eight sounds absolutely massive. Like, unbelievably massive. I know what you mean. But it begins to make sense once you understand how air pollution kills us. 
Breathing it, perhaps unsurprisingly, causes and exacerbates lung problems, from asthma to cancer. But our lungs aren't the biggest victim in this. Around two-thirds of air pollution deaths aren't actually to do with our lungs. They're heart disease and stroke. When air pollution particles enter our body, our immune system goes into overdrive, causing inflammation, raising our blood pressure, and meaning our hearts have to work extra hard to pump blood around. Around. Heart disease, stroke, and lung-related diseases make up all five of the top five causes of death globally. So if air pollution makes us die even more often from the things we die the most often from, well, it starts to make sense that it's killing one out of every eight people globally. And there are loads of other ways that air pollution harms us too that we're only just learning about. Like a study just now showed a direct link between exposure to air pollution and risk of dementia. Air pollution takes many forms, but this includes tiny particles of soot, known as black carbon, emitted when we burn dirty fuels like wood or coal. Particles can get into our lungs and, if they're small enough, our bloodstreams. And air pollution can also be gases like sulfur dioxide and NOx. These can be toxic on their own or form other deadly substances like ozone. But I thought that- Right, and yes, ozone high up in the ozone layer is great and we love it. Ozone down where we breathe in the air, toxic and we hate it. Air pollution varies wildly across the world, with the poorest countries and the poorest people within countries breathing in the worst air. But even slightly polluted air is dangerous. The World Health Organization estimates that around the world, 99% of us are breathing in air that is too polluted. So odds are that that includes me. Right. Now, not all air pollution is caused by burning fossil fuels, like ammonia and methane coming from farming, or particles and chemicals released as car tires wear down on the road. There are also natural sources of air pollution, like sand, dust, and sea salt that get into the air we breathe. But most air pollution deaths are caused by human activity, and about half of all air pollution deaths are caused by producing and burning fossil fuels. As Max Rosa of Our World in Data puts it, fossil fuel caused air pollution is causing six times the annual death toll of all murders, war deaths, and terrorist attacks combined. So yeah, even if you don't care about climate change, you should probably care that we're burning fossil fuels given that it's literally killing millions of us a year. And it's not just the air pollution that's killing us. I mentioned Leluca fur up top as one of the main drivers of climate change, which I'm still claiming not to care about. But here's the thing, a thing that I actually just learned about. Chopping down trees is killing us too. Deforestation has killed half a million people in just 20 years. How? because of the heat. I thought we weren't talking about global warming. I'm not. This isn't about global climate change caused by emissions, but by chopping down trees in tropical areas, that directly affects the local climate. That's because it reduces shade and rainfall and increases fire risk. And that's exposing more and more people to deadly heat. And I know we're pretending not to talk about it, but of course this is amplifying the heat we're already seeing from global warming. That's making heat waves hotter and more common. And the impact heat waves have on our health is made even worse by air pollution. And of course, climate change is raising the risk of wildfires, which are also a major source of air pollution. So all of this, the climate change, the air pollution, the destruction of forests, it's all interlinked. And it's killing us. And that's not to mention the other threats, how getting hold of fossil fuels harms the people working to secure it, as well as the people living nearby, how destroying forests is often accompanied by attacks on indigenous people and environmental defenders, and how climate change is already harming us, not just through heat, but through other extreme weather, through food and water scarcity, through spread of diseases, and through forcing us from our homes and shattering livelihoods 
livelihoods. And not believing in it doesn't magically make those harms disappear. Okay, this is all extremely bleak even for someone who's pretending not to care about climate change. It is definitely bleak, but in reality, we're not helpless. We can see what's causing these deaths and we know how to stop doing those things, meaning that these are lives that can be saved. We can do what we can to adapt to air pollution, educating people about the risks and issuing clear warnings and instructions about say, exercising and working outside when levels spike. Countries and cities can put strict requirements on emissions from cars and from factories, and green spaces in cities can help soak up toxic air. But beyond these direct approaches, we can see that actually finally tackling climate change would do so much more than just tackling climate change. Switching from destroying to preserving tropical forests helps stop the world heating, while also stopping people in those parts of the world sweltering under even more extreme heat. And we know fossil fuels alone are killing over 3 million every year through toxic air. So transitioning away from fossil fuels not only means halting climate change, it also means directly saving those millions of lives. Millions. And this isn't just theory. We've seen that as countries put policies in place to clean up air, the deaths drop. Here in Germany in 1990, almost 100,000 people died every year due to air pollution. Today, deaths have dropped to just one third that level. That's even as the population is getting older and so more vulnerable over time. Look, at the moment, we're not just poisoning our planet, our home. We're also directly poisoning ourselves. This isn't some hypothetical future threat. Millions are losing their lives today. And there are people out there who want you to look the other way or convince you that we need the air pollution murderer in our village, that we have no choice but to live with them. But that's not true. We have the solutions today to stop burning fossil fuels and protect land across the planet. The challenge is actually putting those solutions into place and starting to save lives. And if you want to know how we can get a huge chunk of the way there, well, I made a video on exactly that over here. Okay, until next time, bye. Air pollution. Oh,